So this is a DBS tips basically. Uh, just wanted to talk about this card. Uh, I think I'll put this for my um, Dragon Ball Super Kung Fu talk basically. I want to talk about this card. It's weird to see people not seeing the value in this card. Um, some people are thinking, you know, the card's overwhelming. I mean, underwhelming. Well, it's clearly overwhelming. <laughs> uh, this is a very broken leader. Um, so, uh, well, first off, I, I mainly use this as a uh, successor leader. I use this so that, I, that way I can, uh, you know, of course, draw two cards, but untap the two energy. That's the most important part. Card broken is that it has an added ability. I, I barely, I don't even really thought about uh, the active main ability. But then when I looked at the uh, effect again, I'm like, oh wait, actually this is really good for many other strategies. I just don't focus on that. All I cared about was the untapping two energy part. The fact you draw two cards is awesome because obviously you, it takes two cards to awaken this leader, and then to draw two cards to replace those two cards. And then untap two energies. So untap two energies whenever you want, especially as early as turn two. You know that's usually turn two would be a good time to to untap two energies. Uh, turn four is a good time to untap two energies um, under the right condition. Turn five. So I've I made I've already made like what six decks just with this leader alone. So for people to be like, oh, this leader is so underwhelming, so mad. Uh, don't think this leader is going to be good. It's like I literally built six decks revolving around this leader right after it got announced. I've just been pumping out um, decks. Mostly these decks are uh, successor decks, you know, taking advantage of the successor mechanic. But I've done other stuff with the this leader, the ability of untapping two energies. Um, untapping energies is powerful. No reason to think a leader is not good when the leader literally says untap energy. You know what I mean? You got to think of energy like money. And the ability to use a $20 bill more than once, that's powerful. You know what I mean? If you have a million dollars and you can use a million dollars twice, that's powerful, right? So it's the same thing with energy. You tap your energy to pay for something, untap it to pay for something else. Why wouldn't it just inherently be a good leader? Even if you, you don't think it might be a good leader for uh, the cards in set 9, which is false. But if you think that, why aren't you thinking that this is a good leader for any other older sets? Ironically, this is, you could just be like, oh, this is a good leader just to combine it with uh, the old cell chain. <clears throat> you know, if, if you if you like, you know, the old cell, you know, you know chain and strategies and whatnot, then this would be a good leader just for that alone. You can splash in a little bit of yellow just so you can awaken this leader. You know, but the fact that even without awakening, let's say you don't even care about awakening, this active main is is actually really really good. The ability to look at the top five cards of your deck and then choose one of those cards and add it to your hand and then and then discard um, you know a card from your hand. It's really good. That's that's deck thinning, right? That's as well as that that's filtering. Right? Who doesn't like to have free filter? You don't pay no energy for this ability. You do this once per turn, and you can obviously com combine this with, with an effect that does let you look at the top five or top ten. So use this, look at the top five, grab something, shuffle your deck. Then look, then play something, look at the top ten, grab something, shuffle your deck. I mean, synergy. But the main thing here is that I wanted to point out is I like the fact that you can choose not to add a card so you can deliberately look at the top five cards of your deck, not add a not add a card, put those cards back, show for your deck, and then you don't have to discard because you then add a card. So this is really awesome, f just in general. When let's say you have effects that let you put cards at the bottom of your deck <clears throat> from your dropper or whatever reason you have to put cards in the bottom of your uh, your deck, or in case somebody uses an effect that puts cards at the bottom of your deck. You know, let's say you play a battle card and then they counter it and then they put your, your battle card on the bottom of your deck. The ability to trigger this ability to just shuffle your deck because you didn't add a card to your hand by its effect. You just, for free, shuffle your deck as consistency. Another thing is, just doing it. Just be like, active main, shuffle my deck, and that's it. 
that increases your, your, your consistency. Here's another thing you can do, right? Turn uh, at the beginning of the game, you mulligan, right? So you can try to get a better hand. Right? And then when you then when it's your turn, use the active main. You know, to try to make your hands better, obviously. But then, after that, <clears throat> you have the ability to keep shuffling your deck, you know, once per turn, in order to increase your chances of getting to your cards. Because one of the things mathematically when it comes to, uh, you know, building decks and stuff like that is randomness, right? RNG is RNG. So randomness is something you have to take into account. But when you have the ability to shuffle for free on top of that, you always increase your, your, your mathematic, you always you always increase your chances and probability of getting certain cards. Especially if you have a lot of one ofs. If you play one copy, two copies of cards, and you want to increase the chances of you getting those cards, then using this ability just to shuffle is important. And the fact that you can add a card so you can look at the top five, it's like, ah, they didn't find what I'm looking for. Put these five back, shuffle. Next turn, I'll try again. You know what I mean? Until you finally get to that one card, like, ah, oh, there's my ultimate. It took me two turns, but I finally got to it. And now I'm going to go off. Uh, of course, you can always add a card through, the, through this effect just to thin out your deck. That's the thing. Look at the top five. Add a card. Shuffle the rest back in your deck. Discard a card. You can even discard the card that you just added. That's the thing you could obviously take into account. You can look at the top five and it's like, alright, I want this card in the drop area. So, look at the top five, drop that card in the drop area, put the rest back in your deck shuffle, just so you can thin out the deck, so you can increase your chances of getting to your good stuff. Um, especially uh, doing this so that way you can uh, get rid of any extra copies of certain cards you might have already used. Let's say you, you have a, a play set of, of a card that you're, it's only in the deck just for like energy, like you just have it there because it's like multicolor the energy that you want, then use this effect to be like, alright, look at the top five, oh, there's that multicolor card I don't need no more, since I already have one in my in my energy area, pitch it to the graveyard, you can thin out your deck and increase your chances of drawing things you want, because you already got the card you needed for, you know, your energy, so that that's that's another way of, of taking advantage of this uh, active main ability. Um, the fact that this doesn't specify anything, it says card, that's the other good thing, card. The fact that you can look at the top five cards of your deck and then just add any card, whether it be an extra card or a battle card, is really good. But then back to his Awakened Surge ability. You know, the fact that you put one green and one yellow under this card and then draw two cards and untap, that's really useful. Um, I noticed they're making more cards that have the ability that uh, you can... You can do the Awaken Surge. Uh, you can pay the cost for the Awaken Surge from your battle area, so that's nice. They might even make it where you can do it from your drop area, so that'd be an option, especially especially with this leader, with the fact that you know you do the active main. You know, look at the top five, add a card to your hand, discard a card, and then if and then when you're ready to Awaken Surge, you can just use whatever you discarded through the active main ability to surge. Like, you gotta think that far ahead. You gotta think, like, what c could you do with this leader? What could Bandai put into the game that can make this leader better <clears throat> in the long run? But it already is good right now. Just with 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 the stuff we um, currently got spoiled, as well as stuff that already existed. The ability to untap two energy is nothing to, to look down on. Especially Awakened Surge. That's the biggest deal. It's the Awakened Surge. Because there's, there's leaders that untap two energy. So, of course, we're so used to leaders that untap two energy. So, it'd be easy to think, oh, that's not a big deal. Um, yeah, because we're so used to you have to have four or less life in order to, you know, untap the two energies. But now we have a way you can just untap the two energies on command. That's the most powerful thing you can have in a card game. Control. When you decide you want to do something, you can do it. No one likes to be in a, in a situation where they can't do something because of a certain situation. I've been in one scenario where I was like, damn. I need to awaken, but I can't awaken because my opponent didn't deal me enough damage for me to awaken. 
You know what I mean? So I had to rely on my opponent in order to awaken. And I didn't want to um, put cards into the deck for self-awakening because they could get in the way. So, you know, checks and balance. That's another thing is sometimes you, uh, you have to do, you do or you do not. You do play something or you don't play something because you have to think of uh, the situations you might end up in more often than not where you might need that effect or you might not. I always try to largely rely on my opponent to put me in a position where I do awaken, but I don't 100% rely on awakening, which is why I always focus on the front of the side of the leader and build my decks on based off the front side. That's why you notice I haven't even gone to the back side of this leader yet because the front is all I need. The leader literally can have no back, no, no, no awaken side, and I'd be all good with that. But of course, in order to do awaken search, he has to have an awaken side, right? So I always build my decks based off the front side of the leader because once you start the game, that's what you start off with, the front. Then you flip over to the, to the back. Now the back, you know, can give you uh, some advantage um, late game, you know, that you can take advantage of, like a finisher type effect or something. But I always build my decks based off the leader's front side. I've built decks where just uh, the leader awakening ability is all I needed. Just untapping two energies, or drawing two cards, or drawing a card and untapping an energy, or something similar to that. Where I just use the Awaken as the only effect that the, the card has, because that's the only effect I needed. <clears throat> it might have had a, another effect, like let's say a, a leader that has double strike, and you Awaken when you have four or less life, um, two energies. Alright, that's good. That's all I need. Most people want 3, 4, 5, 12 effects on the front side of their leader. They want the ability to draw and all this extra stuff. Like, nah, I'll take double strike and, um, um, and untap two energies when I have four or less life. I'll take that for now. But then now we got this leader, which is really awesome. Plus, he untaps two energies, not two uh, green yellow energies, right? Or green energies or yellow energies, two energies in general. You can untap any colors. You can untap blue, red, you know whatever black right you can untap anything so that's very useful that it can untap two energies and it's not color specific so that's useful and all you have to do is give this card a green and a yellow which won't be that hard to throw in a couple of green yellow multicolor cards just so you can awaken just so you can awaken and then the rest of your deck could be just red or blue or you know if you want to go mono, mon, mono colored Except for the, you know, the, the other colors you splashed, you know, the, the green red you splashed in. That's very useful, it's just as long as you have green and red, I mean green and yellow, in order to awaken, you automatically have that unt um, untapped to energy ability. Alright, All right, like I was saying, um, this has multiple uses um, beyond the green yellow aspect of the deck uh, of the leader you know you can obviously you you could you could use this without even the awaken part even without having green and yellow in your deck in order to awaken just the ability to look at the top five cards of your deck and then add one card and pitch one card that's useful for any overrun you know any overrun decks where you're constantly filtering and putting cards in your drop area so that way you can you know eventually eventually overrun um, something um, uh, what else? But man, that untapping two energies whenever you want, so good. Plus another thing, he's a he's green and and yellow. Since he's a yellow leader, you automatically get a lot of the benefits of yellow cards like um, uh, Grady Bardock, Rager's War Cry. You automatically have access to that. Just by this using this leader, so being able to tap two energies to play uh, Raiders War Cry when you combo with it, right? Pay two energies combo, and then you can play him, draw a card, then use this card's surge ability to untap those two energies, and then use those two energies to play another Raiders War Cry when you attack with the first Raiders War Cry, making it a 30k uh, double strike 
and then play your second copy, and then you draw another card, and then you have a 20k double strike they can attack. So right there, you could potentially be swinging for 5 damage on turn 2. The fact that you could be swinging for 5 damage on turn 2 is pretty good. And it's all with one, you know, with just using the leader uh, awaken ability. And of course you can use the active main just to even get to those two cards, to even get to the point where you have two uh, Raiders War Cry. So, a lot of synergy, the ability to get to what you need, and with the active main, and then uh, do some energy um, manipulation to get some advantage, to be able to play multiple cards in a single turn. The ability to play, you know, two cards with the same two, with the same two energies is pretty big deal. Um, being able to do something where you tap four energy to play something, then you get an effect that lets you untap two energies, then use the, this leader's ability, you know, surge, awaken surge, to untap two more energy, and then you're back to four energy, and then you can use the four energy to do a whole bunch of stuff like, you know, arrival, uh, you know, obviously successor is a, is a good thing, a good mechanic, great mechanic to use now. Um, so this has a lot of potential. So clearly this is a successor leader. Let's see what his backside does. Besides the memes. Active main once per turn if your life is four or less. Choose one card under this card and place it into the owner's drop area. Choose one until the start of your next main phase. If your opponent plays a battle card, it comes into play rest. So basically crush your ball. Um... Floodgated, floodgate, crusher ball, basically. And second effect you could choose is choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, KO it, then choose one card in your opponent's hand and place it into drop area. So that, yeah, the ability to get rid of something uh, and, and make your opponent discard a card. The most important thing is making your opponent discard a card because KOing a battle card is not always that great, especially nowadays. People can trigger effects now. Oh, you got rid of my battle card by a skill. I get an effect. Like, ugh. Oh, it's hard to kill something nowadays. Because <laughs> somebody's going to plus from it. Um, but, yeah. See, the backside is decent, but it's not the reason I play him. I play him for the front. Because the front gives me all that I need to go off. And, oh yeah, again, we just got this leader and people are already um, not seeing the potential and not seeing how powerful it is and what they could do with it. The same thing that they would make a Frieza, didn't see no potential in the card until the Great Apes came out and then suddenly Mecha, Mecha Apes was a thing, uh, a, a Frieza swap, right? You know, some people didn't care for the swap mechanic until they realized that it was busted. No one cared for Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Until they realized it was busted. You know what I mean? And I was never one of those people. I was always like, oh, this is powerful. This is busted. Oh, I like this. Instantly grabbed Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Got the Mecha Frieza. You know, I already had ideas to use them before even the, the, the apes were even announced. I was already going to do a whole bunch of stuff to self-awakening and do some, some, because I definitely wanted to ramp. That was the main thing I was thinking about Frieza was to use it with objection so I can ramp and start playing some really cool stuff. But then the, the apes came out, I was like, uh, yeah. And then people were like, oh shit, apes, make a Frieza broken, like, yeah, obviously. And I was one of those people that obviously made a Mecha Frieza deck, uh, Mecha Frieza ape deck. Um, it was interesting, no one. No one cared for Mecha Frieza until the apes were announced. I already was coming up with strategies to ramp with uh, Mecha Frieza. And now he's the ratted, so there's that. Uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, right off the bat, ramp. Pitch a, pitch a card, get two energy, play objection, play another energy, so you're already at three energy on turn one. And then on turn two, play an energy, so you're at four energy, right? And then you do objection with Senzu being. Uh, uh, play so you can un you know untap 
and ended up with five energy on turn two. Five energy on turn two. And obviously, the max you can do is turns is six to energy. So by turn three, you already be at six energy with the you know original uh, Super Saiyan three Goku. Now they got a new Eradicated version, which ironically is like uh, it's not too different from the original. And all I care about was the front effect. I was surprised when 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 I heard that the reason he uh, Super Saiyan three Goku was banned was because the untapping three energy effect. And it's like that's why y'all un- that's why he got unbanned. I mean, not unbanned, got banned. That's not what made him broke to me. But okay, to each their own. It, that's a good effect. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just like that's when I when I played him, I I never got to use that effect. It was always ramp, win, ramp, win, and that's it. That's the end of the video.